Here is the recap of the first and second seasons of The Morning Show. A very popular show, called The Morning Show, airs on a major American television channel. One of the show's hosts, named Mitch, is fired after an investigation into allegations of sexual harassment. Mitch was not aware of this investigation, and neither was his co-host Alex, who realizes that she may now suffer for it. During a live broadcast, she informs the whole of America that her partner has been fired because of sexual harassment, which makes Mitch incredibly angry as it means that his career is at an end. We are introduced to another character, an energetic reporter named Bradley, who becomes a viral sensation overnight after a clip of her altercation with protesters appears online. After that, the girl quits her job and returns home, where she also fights with her mom and her drug-addicted brother. The morning show decides to do a story with her and brings Bradley to New York that same day where Alex interviews her. The host pushes the girl, but she fights back, surprising everyone in the studio. The executive director of the TV channel named Corey sees her as a prospect and starts to promote her in every possible way wanting to provoke Alex into foolish behavior, which may eventually contribute to her dismissal. Alex realizes that her current position on the TV channel is very shaky and her contract may not be renewed. The girl threatens the management that she can leave the show and it will bring down the ratings, but Corey ridicules her and does not believe the heroine. At the next event in Alex's honor, Bradley is also invited there and the management sits her down with the heroine to piss her off. Alex decides to go all in and, although she doesn't like the young reporter, publicly announces Bradley as her new co-host. Fred, the president of the network, is furious at this announcement, but Corey calms him down, believing that it's only to their advantage, as they will eventually be able to fire Alex easily. However, at the investor meeting, Alex puts Fred in his place by informing him that without her, the morning show will end. Bradley is shocked to become a host and the morning show team has to get the girl ready for the live show in no time. Mia offers the heroine to become her producer and she instantly agrees. During the first live broadcast, Bradley, talking about herself, mentions her abortion at the age of 15. Fred is furious, but Corey assures him that it's not actually a bad thing and thus a new young audience will emerge, supporting such fine. Hannah, a senior network agent, learns that one of the girls Mitch has been harassing is about to be interviewed by a rival network. Hannah convinces her to talk about everything on the morning show, and Bradley interviews her. The heroine, going off script, starts pressuring the girl, and it is revealed that someone else at the network was aware of the problem. Alex also becomes jealous as Brady becomes more popular than her on the show. The staff department of the TV channel starts an investigation in which they want to understand who else was aware of Mitch's behavior and how it can affect the TV channel. In this investigation, we learn that it was Mia who filed a report against Mitch because they had an affair and she realized that she could no longer tolerate his behavior towards other girls at work. However, she didn't want him to be fired. I also want to mention, Mitch's wife is leaving him. But Alex's family isn't doing well either. She hasn't lived with her husband for a long time, but she pretends to the public that they are still together. However, in the middle of the season, her husband decides to divorce her and her daughter blames her mother for it because she put work before family, which is partly true. In parallel, we are also told the story of a weather news host named Janko and an assistant named Claire who are secretly dating at work. Because of all the hype, they are afraid to announce their relationship, but towards the end of the season they almost decide to. However, Claire fears that her co-worker's attitudes towards her will change afterwards and breaks up with Janko, but in the last episode Claire does embrace him in public. There is also another strange storyline Daniel hosts the morning show Political News. He was prophesied to take Mitch's place, but with Bradley's arrival, he became embittered with the network and wanted to leave for a competitor telling dirty secrets from his job. The New York Times is about to run an article about Mitch's sex scandal. Mitch shows up at the network and asks his former co-workers to stand up for him, but no one wants to do it. Bradley, remembering the words that were said at the last interview, asks Mitch if anyone else knew about what happened. At first, he doesn't share any information with the girl, but when the New York Times article comes out and Mitch realizes that the TV channel made him look like a complete villain, 
he decides to meet Bradley. We also learn that it was Chip who made it so that the New York Times article would go to Mitch and not affect the entire network. He did it, as we will learn at the end of the season, because he values Alex very much and didn't want her to get hurt. At a charity event, Alex freaks out and goes to meet Mitch as she misses him. Mitch suggests that she get together, reasoning that they've slept together before and neither of them actually have other halves at the moment. However, at this time a New York Times article comes out and Alex asks for a ride home. The fires begin to rage in California and the morning show sends almost the entire crew to make a report there. Alex has a nervous breakdown live on air due to her divorce, but Bradley manages to calm her down. Bradley also shares with Alex about his alcoholic father who abandoned their family 15 years ago. Chip realizes that he's probably going to be fired soon because of the whole Mitch situation and goes to Corey for advice. Corey tells Chip that he wants to oust Fred from his position as network director, and if Chip helps him by finding some dirt, he'll be guaranteed a spot on the morning show. While reporting on the burning California, Bradley suggests a story where they tell about rich people bribing firemen to put out their houses while ordinary people's houses burn down. Fred forbids the story because he is among those who paid the fireman, but Chip, enjoying the fact that he can make Fred uncomfortable, lets the story air. Hannah gives some advice to Claire about the job, and by happy coincidence Bradley takes her on as his assistant. However, Hannah sees Claire sneaking into Janko's room at night and thinks that's how she got the job. Bradley meets Mitch, and he suggests that she arrange an interview with him on the morning show, where he will tell his version of events and also tell the public that Fred was aware of the harassment on the network. Bradley demands proof, and Mitch claims that there is one person who can confirm it all. It turns out to be Hannah, and we're brought back a few years. The girl was an assistant then, but Mitch saw potential in her and took her with him on another report in Las Vegas. In the evening, he invited her to his place and, using his influence, you could say forced the girl to have sex. Back in New York, Hannah can't stand it and goes to Fred to report about Mitch, but he turns a blind eye and pays her off by offering her a promotion. We are also shown that even then the network was planning to fire Alex as her ratings started to drop. Bradley tells Alex that he wants to interview Mitch, which angers the old host. She goes to Fred, tells him about the conspiracy, and arranges with him to get Chip and Bradley fired. Chip and Bradley, on the contrary, go to Corey and agree to secretly conduct an interview with Mitch, which will lead to Fred's dismissal. Alex also visits Mitch and threatens him that he will tell everyone the following information if he goes to the interview. It turns out that in some distant past, Mitch took advantage of Alex being drunk and slept with her. Whether that's true or not, we'll never know. Mitch meets Han and asks her to confirm his words about Fred's involvement in the sex scandal. The girl agrees, but only on the condition of anonymity. Soon Bradley demands that Mitch tell him who his source is and goes to talk to Hannah. As is his habit, Bradley starts pressuring the girl, trying to find out all the details, causing Hannah to relive that night again. The girl chases the host away, but she manages to record their conversation on a tape recorder. Maggie Breener, a famous journalist, is also writing an article about the unhealthy atmosphere at the morning show TV station. She finds out about Chip and Corey's conspiracy and reports it to Fred, since they are old friends. However, she tells him that she will still run the article that will put the nail in Fred's coffin. Chip gets fired and realizes he needs to act immediately. He convinces Corey and his staff to sneak Mitch into the studio to close up and start the interview. However, because of all that has happened, Hannah dies of a drug overdose, apparently committing suicide, and the morning show studio finds out about it. Alex realizes she picked the wrong side and joins Bradley on air to talk about the network's management's silencing of sexual harassment. This is the end of the first season. If you've listened all the way up here, you like what I do. So subscribe to my channel, like this video, and write some comments. After a scandalous live show, Alex has a nervous breakdown and leaves the show without even saying goodbye to anyone. The board of directors fires Corey and then suspends Bradley. In the evening they meet, talk all night, and the man falls in love with the heroine. In the morning, Bradley goes to the board of directors and convinces them to put her and Corey back on the show. After a while, life at the TV station returns to normal. 
The heroine continues to lead the morning show, but with a new host, and Corey becomes the head of UBA TV. Let me now quickly tell you the new hierarchy at the studio. After Corey comes his assistant Stella, then Mia the head producer, and then everyone else. After a few months, the morning show ratings start to drop, and Corey decides to call Alex back. Meanwhile, Alex lives in the middle of nowhere and writes a book about her life. Corey comes to visit her and convinces her to return to the TV channel, promising her a multi-million dollar contract. A few weeks later, everyone learns that Alex is coming back, but Bradley is not happy about it, thinks that Alex dumped her at the most difficult time and has not even called her once this year. The heroine realizes what she did was wrong. Soon she comes to see her former manager, Chip. She knows that she treated him not very well and asks him to come back. He is very angry with Alex, but since he is secretly in love with her, he becomes the heroine's manager again. It becomes known that the parents of Hannah, who died due to an overdose in the previous season, want to sue the network. They have a good chance of winning, and the board of directors believes Corey is at fault. No one knows this, but Corey has settled with Fred in the past. The new director will pay him $129 million, and in return Fred will go quietly. After a while, Corey manages to convince Hannah's parents to withdraw the lawsuit, telling her father that otherwise the TV channel will smear his dead daughter with mud. This manipulation is not easy for Corey, because after all he is not a bad person. Daniel, an host on The Morning Show, is increasingly noticing that he is not taken seriously and thinks it's because of the color of his skin. One day the man is sent to China to report on the emergence of a new virus called COVID. Suddenly the whole city is closed for quarantine and Daniel is locked in a hotel for two weeks. The TV station forgets about their host as the topic of the virus was not so popular in the beginning. But when Daniel comes back, he starts swinging and gets fired at the end of the season. Also remember a news host like Yanko, who had an affair with his assistant Claire, and install the events. They split up but still have feelings for each other. One day on air, Yanko utters a phrase that some viewers took as a racist remark. At first he has to apologize to the viewers, but then the network gets a record of the journalist hitting a racist, defending an innocent girl. The man was suspended from the air, but eventually returned. Alex reconciles with Bradley and is ready to go on air. Soon the heroine is interviewed by Laura Peterson, with whom she has a bad relationship. Lori explicitly hints during the interview that Alex had a relationship with Mitch, who was fired in the first season because of the harassment scandal. The heroine is furious at such a question, but lies that they were just friends. She also learns that journalist Maggie Breener is writing a book and in it a lot of attention will be given to Alex and Mitch. Alex realizes that someone told the journalist that they slept together. Amidst all this, Alex starts to lose her mind. The TV channel has invested a lot of money in the advertising campaign for the return of the cult host, but she takes a sick leave and no one can get in touch with her for several weeks. Laura Peterson also interviews Bradley and a romance begins between them. The heroine doesn't want to talk about the relationship, but their shared photos leak online. Since Alex is still missing somewhere, Corey decides to make Laura Bradley's co-host for a while. He also learns of their connection and is upset that he can't be with the heroine. Meanwhile, COVID is on the rise and people around the world are dying from the disease. Meanwhile, Mitch has gone to Italy and is living as a recluse in a mansion since absolutely everyone has turned their backs on him. One day he meets a woman named Paula who wants to become a documentary filmmaker. They become close and we learn that Mitch has truly repented of his past deeds. Paul interviews him, telling the man that she will delete everything if he wishes, but he lets her keep the tape. Soon it turns out that they have been in contact with a sick COVID and decide to isolate themselves in Mitch's mansion. A few days later, Alex appears on his doorstep. The heroine secretly left America in the hope of meeting him. She wants him to make a statement that they never slept together. Mitch is not happy that he will have to lie again, but for Alex he is ready to do it. The characters still have tender feelings for each other and miss the old days. All night they talk and remember the past, and in the morning Alex gets on a plane and flies back to America. That same night Mitch goes to buy cigarettes and gets into a car accident, which kills him. On UBA, they learn of Mitch's death and want Alex to talk about it live, but still no one can reach her. 
Soon the bosses learn of her trip to Italy and fear that she may have also been killed in a car accident. However, when the private plane with Alex lands, everyone calms down. At the funeral, Alex informs the crowd that Mitch has truly repented for his actions. She defends her former friend, but not everyone likes what she did. Soon Alex wants to quit the network, as she realizes that the release of Maggie Breener's book will not only ruin her career, but also damage the reputation of the morning show. Corey doesn't want to let the host go, and through her connections gets a copy of the book. The plan is to have Bradley read it and then interview Maggie Breener to soften the blow. Things go much better than expected. Bradley completely trashes the woman's book, then saves Alex's career. Because of everything that's happened, the UBA network is suffering huge losses. The board of directors are not happy with the way Corey is running their company. Because of low ratings and constant disobedience, they want to fire Bradley. They also want to delay the launch of the streaming channel that Corey created. However, the man stands his ground and confronts the board. He gets up the courage to tell Bradley that he loves her, but she can't answer him because she is looking for her brother. A little earlier, her drug-addicted brother shows up at her door asking for help. Bradley can no longer tolerate her abnormal family and decides to distance herself from them. She takes her brother to a treatment center, but reports that she is no longer going to communicate with him. Soon Bradley learns that something has happened to him and that he may have committed suicide. However, it turns out that he was beaten up badly and is hospitalized. Laura also leaves New York, but remains in the same relationship with Bradley. After a while, Paula contacts Corey with the help of Alex. She wants to produce documentary shows on their channel and shows a touching interview with Mitch as an example. However, she doesn't want to run it on air as she promised it to the deceased. Although the hype with the book about Alex and Mitch has died down, a video leaked to the internet where the heroine at the funeral defends the man who was condemned by the society. Just at that moment, it turns out that Alex has COVID's disease and the UBA management realizes that she picked it up most likely in Italy. This could spark an even bigger scandal, but it doesn't. Chip suggests that Corey create a show for his streaming channel in which the heroine will overcome her illness, thus showing the audience how dangerous the virus is. Chip, ignoring the quarantine, comes to Alex and together they create a studio at the heroine's home. The woman copes with the disease, after which they record the broadcast, in which Alex informs the audience that she is done apologizing for who she is. This is the end of the second season. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click the like button. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.